Good morning. For all of those who've been waiting to sing Christmas carols, today is your day. So we're going to start out this morning with our annual carol sing. I'd like to start with number 132 in the hymnal, and we'll sing the first and last verse. After this, I'll take requests, and if you can please find it in the hymnal so you can tell me the number in the hymnal, because I don't have these memorized yet. Okay. So, good Christian friends rejoice, number 132, first and last. Good Christian friends rejoice with heart and soul and voice. Give me heed to what we say. Jesus Christ is born today. Once and as before it all, the need is in the manger now. Christ is born today. Christ is born today. Taking request, you raise your hand. Margie, one thirty-four. Joy to the world. First and last verse. Another. 88. O come, O come, Emmanuel. Let's sing verses 1, 2, and 7. 1, 2, and 7.
another request. Yes. 135, 135. We'll sing both verses of this one. time for one more. 124. One twenty-four. We'll sing both verses.
The Lord be with you. Good morning and welcome to this uh, service of Lessons and Carols. We're glad that you're here. We're glad that you're tuned in online, and we hope that you enjoy this. December 24th, Christmas Eve, Saturday night, 7 o'clock, right here. We'll do the whole thing with the candles and everything, so be here. And then December 25th, Sunday morning, be here for church. You only get to worship Christ at Christmas once every seven or eight years, so you may as well be here because you don't know if you'll be here next time. A couple of pastoral notes. Um, Dale Whitaker had surgery yesterday afternoon or last night, and he is resting comfortably, Fran says, and uh, he's in ICU and looks like he's gotten through that just fine, so we're thankful for that. We also keep in our prayers Patty and Bob Nell. Uh, Patty's brother died on Friday, and we were surrounding her and Bob with our prayers as well. So let us prepare ourselves to worship God. Please stand in body or spirit and join together in the Advent reading. Today we light the candle of love. We light these candles as a sign of the coming light of Christ 
Advent means coming. We are preparing ourselves for the day when the nations shall beat their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks. Nations shall not lift up sword against nation, neither shall they learn war any more. The wolf shall dwell with the lamb, the leopard shall lie down with the kid, the calf and the lion and the fatling together, and the little child shall lead them. The wilderness and the dry land shall be glad. The desert shall rejoice and blossom. Like the crocus, it shall blossom abundantly and rejoice with joy and singing. The Lord will give you a sign. Look, the young woman is with child and shall bear a son and shall name him Emmanuel. Let us, Let us walk, walk in, in the light, light of the Lord. Lord. Please join me in the prayer of praise and adoration listed in your bulletin. Your faith has shown upon us, so God, in the young woman who is the child. She shall bear a son and name him Emmanuel, God with us. Your presence shall hereafter be a source of comfort and guidance all of the call of your name. Your footsteps shall accompany us. Your breath shall give us new life. Your arms will console us, and your hands will be there to welcome us home. You are our God for all seasons, and you give us all reason to worship your name. Amen. Let us confess our sins together. Let us pray. You shower gifts on your people, O God, and forgive their faults. We keep accounts and settle old scores. You make peace, sending Christ as a sign of reconciliation and hope. We make war and call it peacekeeping. You give us a source of confidence as your spirit is sent into our midst. We cause others to be restless in our anxiety and self-concern. Have mercy upon us, 
Forgive and free us that we may be renewed to serve your people with good will. Amen. The Most High is called merciful because God has mercy on those who have not yet come into the world and gracious because God is rich in grace to those who repent and turn to the law and compassionate because God makes compassion abound more and more within all of creation. Live in this knowledge and be confident that in Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. Amen. So sorry, I had a hair tie malfunction and I've got my hair um, pulled back with a um, little chenille pipe cleaner. <laughs> I would like to invite all the children and youth to come down for time for young disciples. Come on down. Hi. Come on down. Welcome back. Glad to have you. All righty. Go wait on Shine. Let me get down here. Come on down, buddy. All right. Good morning. All right. Oh, are y'all asleep? Good morning. Good morning. I know it's early, but guess what? Christmas is a week away. Christmas is coming, right? Now, I don't know about you, but we've got some gifts underneath our tree now. Do you have gifts under your tree at home? That's okay. There's still time. There's still time. Yeah, Parker's got some. And we actually opened some gifts yesterday. Yeah, there's the tree. That's right. So, have you ever heard somebody say, oh, you need to keep the Christmas spirit all year long? Have you ever heard somebody say that? Yeah, and we try to, but sometimes it's hard. But you know why we can keep the Christmas spirit all year long? Because when we talk about gifts, God loved us so much that he gave us the gift of Jesus, right? He gave us the gift of Jesus because he loves us so much. He sent his son to come into the world to save us from our sins. So that for those of us who believe in Jesus, we get to spend eternity with him. And so that way we can keep the Christmas spirit all year long. But we can also share that gift of love that God gave to us through Jesus with other people, right? So when you go either to school for the three days you got this week, right? Just the three and then it's Christmas break. Woohoo! We're all excited about that. Remember that you can show others that you love them and share the love of Jesus with others. And we can do that all year long, right? Not just at Christmas time. Okay? All right. So if you were going to blast, you're going to go with Miss Leanna. She is at the back. But first, we are going to say a prayer. You repeat after me. All right. He's ready. All right. Dear God, God. thank you you. for for giving us the gift of Jesus. Help us us. to share his love love. all year long. long. Amen. Amen. So we begin our service of lessons and carols. 
And the first lesson is from Isaiah 9, 2 through 7. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who lived in a land of deep darkness, on them light has shined. You have multiplied the nation, you have increased its joy. They rejoice before you as with joy at the harvest, as people exult when dividing plunder. For the yoke of their burden and the bar across their shoulders, the rod of their oppressor, you have broken as on the day of Midian. For all the boots of the tramping warriors and all the garments rolled in blood shall be burned as fuel for the fire. For a child has been born for us, a son given to us, authority rests upon his shoulders, and he is named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. His authority shall grow continually, and there shall be endless peace for the throne of David and his kingdom. He will establish and uphold it with justice and with righteousness from this time onward and forevermore. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. In a meditation by Susan Palo Cherwine, Christ lights the way. In the latter days, in the latter early days, God again saved a people in bondage. God again led a people to freedom. God again sent light into darkness. Into the night of despair, God sent the sun who rose in the east, who rose after three days in death, who brought forth a new day. The light shines in the darkness and the darkness has not overcome it. Jesus came, loved, died, arose like a new day in our lives, lighting the way out of bondage, bondage to fear, bondage to the fear of death, lighting the way to freedom. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. Amen. <laughs>
the second lesson, Isaiah 7, 10 through 17, labeled, Isaiah gives Ahaz the sign of Emmanuel. Again, the Lord spoke to Ahaz, saying, Ask a sign of the Lord your God. Let it be deep as Sheol or high as heaven. But Ahaz said, I will not ask, and I will not put the Lord to the test. Then Isaiah said, Hear then, O house of David, is it too little for you to weary mortals that you weary my God also? Therefore the Lord himself will give you a sign. Look, the young woman is with child and shall bear a son and shall name him Emmanuel. He shall eat curds and honey by the time he knows how to refuse the evil and choose the good. For before the child knows how to refuse the evil and choose the good, the land before whose two kings you are in dread will be deserted. The Lord will bring on you and on your people and on your ancestral house such days that have, as have not come since the day that Ephraim departed from Judah, king of Assyria. Meditation, Longing by Susan Palo Cherwin. The cycle, the church year, shaped by the life of Christ, built on the Jewish festival cycle, drawn from earlier religions, culled from the natural seasons of the northern hemisphere, this cycle, this circle, confronts us anew at each turning with life's deepest questions, life's most necessary truths. We enter each turning as different people, changing people, and thus the confrontation is different, changed at each time, at each turning of the year. Now the natural world is dormant. Now is the time of darkness. Sunlight is waning. Life is in seeming stasis. And in this dark time, this time of dormancy and twilight, the church moves into Advent. Longing is at the heart of the darkness in Advent. Longing for possibility, longing for fulfillment. As children, it is longing for Christmas and the birth of baby Jesus, and that is enough. But as we age, the longing broadens, deepens, includes more than ourselves and family. It is longing for completion, justice, for peace in the dark time of year. Woven in the darkness of time, fulfillment is growing a body in the dark time of the year. In the dark, all earth is hopeful.
Our third lesson is Isaiah 11, 1 through 9. A shoot shall come out from the stalk of Jesse, and a branch shall grow out of his roots. The spirit of the Lord shall rest on him, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord. His delight shall be in the fear of the Lord. He shall not judge by what his eyes see or decide by what his ears hear, but with righteousness he shall judge the poor and shall decide with equity for the meek of the earth. He shall strike the earth with the rod of his mouth and with the breath of his lips he shall kill the wicked. Righteousness shall be the belt around his waist and faithfulness the belt around his loins. The wolf shall lie down with the lamb. The leopard shall lie down with the kid. The calf and the lion and the fatling together, and a little child shall lead them. The cow and the bear shall graze. Their young shall lie down together, and the lion shall eat straw like the ox. The nursing child shall play over the hole of the asp, and the weaned child shall put its hand on the adder's den. They will not hurt or destroy on all my holy mountain, for the earth will be full of the knowledge of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. And the meditation is in December Darkness by Anne Weems. The whole world waits in December darkness for a glimpse of the light of God. Even those who snarl humbug and chase away the carolers 
have been seen looking toward the skies. The one who declared that he would never forgive has forgiven. And those who left home have returned. And even wars are halted, if briefly, as the whole world looks starward. In the December darkness, we peer from our windows, watching for an angel with rainbow wings to announce the hope of the world. The fourth lesson, Isaiah 40, 1 through 5. Comfort, O oh comfort my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and cry to her that she has served her term, that her penalty is paid, that she has received from the Lord's hand double for all her sins. A voice cries out, cries out in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord. Make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be lifted up, and every mountain and hill be made low. Then uneven ground shall become level, and the rough places a plain. Then the glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and all the people shall see it together, for the mouth of the Lord has spoken. Meditation, Glory, Susan Pello Cherwin. Glory can terrify. Glory can blind. The shepherds trembled. No one has ever seen God. It is God, the only Son, who is close to the Father's heart, who has made him known. And we have seen his glory. It's like looking at the stars at night. If one tries to look directly at a star, it twinkles, fades, disappears, because the light overwhelms the capacity of the rods of the eyes. But if one gazes slightly to the side of the star indirectly, the star becomes clear and steady, visible and light. Visible light is but a portion of the entire spectrum packaged in a form the human eye can see. Light has dawned for the world that night in a form the human heart can see.
The fifth lesson, Micah 5, 1 through 5. Now you are walled around with a wall. Siege is laid against us. With a rod they strike the ruler of Israel upon the cheek. But you, O Bethlehem of Ephrathah, who are one of the little clans of Judah, from you shall come forth for me one who is to rule in Israel, whose origin is from of old, from ancient days. Therefore he shall give them upon until the time when she who is in labor has brought forth. Then the rest of his kindred shall return to the people of Israel, and he shall stand and feed his flock in the strength of the Lord, in the majesty of the name of the Lord his God. And they shall live secure, For now he shall be great to the ends of the earth, and he shall be the one of peace. The meditation is the decree by Ann Weems. And in these days, a decree goes out to all the world, for these are taxing times. We are called again to go to Bethlehem, no matter the state of our health or our world. We have come obedient and faithful, for we have heard the message. We have dreamed the dream that God will come to dwell among us. We come expectant with joy, pregnant with anticipation, for God has done great things for us. We come searching for a sign, bearing our gifts. We come, and we come called from the silent hillsides of our hearts. Startled and frightened by the magnitude of light, we huddle together toward Bethlehem. We come one by one, yet as one, dancing into the promise.
The sixth lesson, Luke 1, 26 to 38, the birth of Jesus foretold. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a town in Galilee called Nazareth, to a virgin engaged to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary. And he came to her and said, Greetings, favored one, the Lord is with you. But she was much perplexed by his words and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. The angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And now you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be great, and he will be called the Son of the Most High, and the Lord God will give to him the throne of his ancestor David. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I am a virgin? The angel said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the child to be born will be holy. He will be called the Son of God. And now your relative Elizabeth, in her old age, has also conceived a son, and this is the sixth month for her who was said to be barren. For nothing will be impossible with God. Then Mary said, Here am I, the servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word. Then the angel departed from her. Meditation, the word became flesh. Susan Palo Cherwin. And the word became flesh. Hail, most favored, the Lord is with you. And lived among us. And you shall bear a son. And we have seen his glory. He will be great. Glory as of a father's only son. And he will be called the son of the most high. Full of grace and truth. My soul magnifies the Lord. And my spirit rejoices in God my Savior. For God has looked with favor on the lowliness of this servant. Full of grace and truth. The mighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. His mercy is for those who fear him. Let it be according to your word. And we have seen his glory. He has shown the strength of his arm. He has scattered the proud in their conceit. Glory as of a father's only son. He has brought down the powerful from their thrones and lifted up the lowly. Full of grace and truth, your word has been fulfilled.
seventh lesson is Luke 2, 1 through 20. In those days, a decree went out from Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration and was taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria. All went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea to the city of David called Bethlehem, because he was descended from the house and family of David. He went to be registered with Mary, to whom he was engaged and who was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child, and she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in bands of cloth and laid him in a manger because there was no place for them in the inn. In that region, there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone round them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is the Messiah, the Lord. And this will be a sign for you. You will find the child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace among those whom he favors. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in a manger. When they saw this, they made known what had been told them about this child, and all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured all these words and pondered them in her heart. And the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen, as it had been told them. In Search of Our Kneeling Places by Anne Weems In each heart lies a Bethlehem, an inn where we must ultimately answer whether there is room or not. When we are Bethlehem bound, we experience our own advent in his. When we are Bethlehem bound, we can no longer look the other way, conveniently not seeing stars, not hearing angel voices. We can no longer excuse ourselves by busily tending our sheep or our kingdoms. This advent, let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing The Lord has made known to us. 
In the midst of shopping sprees, let's ponder in our hearts the gift of gifts. Through the tinsel, let's look for the gold of the Christmas star. In the excitement and confusion, in the merry chaos, let's listen for the brush of angels' wings. This Advent, let's go to Bethlehem and find our kneeling places. Eighth lesson, Matthew 2, 1 through 11, the visit of the wise men. 
In the time of King Herod, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem, asking, Where is this child who has been born King of the Jews? For we observed his star at its rising, and have come to pay him homage. When King Herod heard this, he was frightened, and all Jerusalem with him. And calling together all the chief priests and scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Messiah was to be born. They told him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for so it has been written by the prophet. And you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah. For from you shall come a ruler, who is to shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod secretly called for the wise men and learned from them the exact time when the star had appeared. Then he sent them to Bethlehem, saying, Go and search diligently for the child. And when you have found him, bring me word so that I also may go and pay him homage. When they had heard the king, they set out. And there ahead of them went the star they had seen at its rising until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw that the star had stopped, they were overwhelmed with joy. On entering the house, they saw the child with Mary, his mother, and they knelt down and paid him homage. Then opening their treasure chest, they offered him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Meditation, Worship and Story by Susan Palo Cherwin. From the moment of our birth, we enter a story, the story of our family's generations whose lives sing in and shape our very bones. From the moment of our baptism, we enter a story, the story of God's loving embrace of all generations. From the moment we enter sacred space, we enter a story, the story of God's love and intention for humans and creations revealed in Jesus. From glory to God, which fills us with the angel's song at Jesus' birth, to the reading of his lives and teaching, to the holy, holy, holy of Jesus' entry into Jerusalem, to the Lamb of God, which sets us at his death, to Christ has died, Christ has risen, Christ will come again, and his risen presence at the meal, the ancient shape of the liturgy, of the Mass, a gift to us from generation to generation, sets us in a story, a drama, retelling, a reenactment that vibrates in our very bones.
and let us pray together. Generous God, we give you thanks for all you give to us, especially the gift of Christ at Christmas. Take these our gifts in response to your love and use them to bless others in need. In Jesus' name, amen. And the ninth lesson is John 1, 1 through 5 and 14. The Word became flesh. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through him, and without him not one thing came into being. What has come into being in him was life. And the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. And the word became flesh and lived among us, and we have seen his glory, the glory as of a father's only son, full of grace and truth. And the meditation is God so loved the world by Anne Weems. And the story of Jesus Christ is this. The people of this earth waited for a Messiah, a savior, and only God would send a little baby king. The child grew and began to question things as they were. And the man moved through his days and through this world, questioning the system of kings and priests and marketplace. He was called the new creation the new covenant, the son of God, who brought to all who listened, who saw and who understood change and new life. But kings and corporations and churches of this world would work very hard to keep things as they are out into forever, amen. And so they killed him. He who said, love one another. He who said, feed my sheep for they did not want to share their bread and their wine. Now the story should have ended there, except that the story has always been that our God is the God of the covenant. And the good news is that in spite of our faithlessness, God is faithful and Christ was resurrected for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believed might have everlasting life. So listen, you who have ears to hear. Listen and sit down to bread and wine with strangers. Feed his sheep, love one another, and claim new life in his name. Amen.
So go in peace. And may all the blessing of God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit go with you now and every day forever. Alleluia. Amen. Amen.